So if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking one of two things. First off, where's the Vault Hala content been? And second off, who are you and what have you done with JV? He looks different. Who is this child? I'll explain the second one first. Uh, I dressed up for Halloween and shaved my beard, and I promise it'll come back. Um, I know that I look like I'm 12. It's just a fact when I shave my beard, but it's okay, it'll come back. And then on the first one, yeah, I just wanted to take a short little breather before things get absolutely crazy on the channel. I mean, guys, we're gonna have so much Valhalla. We're gonna have so much the Demon Souls, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Like I might even be able to get that game early. Just next gen games. There's gonna be so much on the channel. So I wanted to take just a little breather for peace of mind before all of this madness goes on. But first, I wanted to share this video with you guys, which is basically me watching every single Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer dating from the very first one back at the end of April this year. I thought it'd be really cool to just watch every single one. Now, there are some trailers that won't be in here. I wanted to select the ones that felt most trailery to me, if that makes sense. You know, we have some like little lore bits from Darby, which are really cool, but I'm not going to include those in this video. There are eight trailers we're going to watch and I'm gonna react and share that with you guys. So let's get to it. First off, we've got the cinematic world premiere trailer. This was the very first one, and I actually made a video about why I missed the old Assassin's Creed that came out like just days before this one came out, and I had no idea this was coming, so it was kind of weird. <laughs> it was kind of coincidental in that way. So let's get started. They are heartless. Yubi always does such a good job with these Gorgeous cinematic trailers. Barbarians. I remember speculating on absolutely every inch of this trailer in my content. They murder and kill blindly. Scar the lands of England. There's the settlements. They will never defend. Never love. The time has come to speak to them in a language they we still will don't hold understand. On. We still don't knew, know who that guy is. We're gonna pause. They're gonna show his face again. Guy on the left. Who is that guy? I mean, we've got King Alfred, we know all about him, although we haven't heard anything really from him since this trailer. He's definitely some kind of Order of the Ancients agent. I still get goosebumps from this. I remember first seeing this and being like, are we actually gonna be able to do decapitate people? And yeah, answer is yes. There's Odin. Odin is with us. Oh. 
God, that guy is so big. Here it comes. Yes! Oh. Assassin's Creed. Still such a good trailer, guys. It really sets the tone, I feel like, for what came after. Great music, obviously. Um, that's a big part of it. But I don't know. Like, it seems like if this came out just now, it would have checked all the boxes for every other trailer and everything else that we've seen so far. And I also remember the hype surrounding this trailer when it first came out. Like, people were genuinely excited. We got to see the Hidden Blade. It was like, Hidden Blade is back. You know, that was the big thing. So yeah, that one was like a top tier trailer, honestly. Um, but it's time to move on to the next one, which is the first look gameplay trailer, which if you guys remember this, this was kind of controversial. Um, people were like, this isn't actually gameplay. It was just in-engine footage. And I actually made a whole rant about this one <laughs> and how like, yeah, they, they probably should have been more clear with the wording. But anyways, let's watch the first gameplay, uh, first look gameplay trailer here. Oh, I remember dissecting these shots constantly so much. Yes, I was like, that's that's Guthrum. That's which it still might be. Um, I actually have no idea. I don't think that's Alfred um, unless they changed Alfred's model a little bit because the newer ones we'll see in trailers soon. But the newer model of Alfred uh, looks different than that guy there. Yes. Oh, the assaults, the siege. And soon in at the very end. Yeah, so that one, I still kind of get why people were a little bit annoyed. Like, it's sort of a small thing to get annoyed about. It's it's very much nitpicking. Like, we didn't see actual gameplay, uh, no UI or anything. But I think people were, like, really chomping at the bits. And it was also part of the promotional material for, like, Xbox Series X and Next Gen. Since it feels like Ubisoft really has a close relationship with Microsoft. But... Yeah, I was still excited to see that trailer, but like a lot of you, I wanted to see UI. I wanted to see like actual gameplay footage. Okay, it is time to move on to the gameplay overview trailer. And this is actually a longer one. Um, this is from the first Ubisoft Forward, and I had gotten to play the game. So I was kind of going into this trailer knowing that I had played the game, but I still didn't have like all the information that they showed off in this trailer. So let's get this thing going. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you will relive the epic saga of the Viking invasion of England. Yeah, that's the assault on Berg Castle, which I did in the first preview. You play as Eivor. And this is when people were pointing at this screenshot in particular and like, Valhalla looks like a PS2 game. And then I was over here like, it's still pre-release. Like, <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Either your game looks better than it does before launch, which Ubisoft has gotten in trouble with, with Watch Dogs, the first game, or you show the game how it is currently and then improve. And that's what we saw, the game improved. A Viking from Norway 
who will lead his or her battle-hardened warriors across the North Sea to the British Isles. Eivor is driven by an ambitious goal, to build a thriving North Sea. Yeah, that's the first time we saw the settlement. Land. Ravensthorpe, yep. There's the name right there. And I remember thinking, like, this is our settlement. Like, we've seen too many different shots for this to not be our settlement. For the good of our clan, it is time we go a Viking. Today we raid, that tomorrow we may build. England is a dark age tangle of broken kingdoms and warring dynasties, a land of opportunity and riches. As you prowl England's rivers by longship, you may raid locations you spot from the shoreline. Ground your ship and blow your horn to lead your raiding crew into battle. Yeah. Okay, I remember obviously analyzing the stuff bit by bit, especially with like the abilities in the bottom left and bottom right corners. Like, what are these abilities? You know, <laughs> we haven't seen these yet. And also like the ability to to light um, buildings and hay on fire. That was a big thing that we discovered in this. Also, the distrust zone in this abbey. This is a place where you can pull up your cloak and like actually blend in. And also this gameplay, like you're watching, it looks a little laggy. That's how the trailer looks as well. I know some people were concerned about that. Being able to revive your Vikings. Will assist you in all your raid. People are also critical of the fire. I know I'm like pointing out all the negative things, but this is just stuff that I'm suddenly remembering. It's fighting enemies. Ah, that's such a cool move there. And stealing cargo too heavy for one set of arms. Whatever riches and resources you pillage may be used to develop your there settlement. There it is. Giving you access to useful services, better tools, and new settlers. Such a good look at, at the, the settlement. Heart of your settlement is the Alliance map. It will serve as a record of the allies you have made and a guide for future opportunities. And the Alliance map, which pretty much this is our first look at how this is going to be uh, very similar to like Dragon Age Inquisition with the, the war table and kind of planning out settling on a certain arc, choosing that, and then going to that territory. The Viking Age was a time of warriors and legends. In Valhalla, you will find the largest variety oh, of enemies guys ever assembled in an Assassin's Creed game. Look how fast that guy Every is. Every archetype offers a unique challenge. Some will coordinate with their allies. Hold up, let's, let's go back a bit. Every archetype offers a unique challenge. This mash mash. I don't know what that's about, but it looks like enemies can grab you, which I feel like we haven't really seen since this gameplay. So that'll be interesting. Some will coordinate with their allies with special oh, attacks. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> while others will use nearby objects to their Also, look at this environment. This place looks amazing. Warriors. To face these attacks, you must find and exploit your opponent's weaknesses to gain the upper hand. That's awesome. That that looks like Battleground Bolt. Or maybe it's uh, Missile Reversal. That was the the move where you can catch an enemy projectile and throw them right back at them. Let's actually watch you that You must again. find and exploit your opponent's weaknesses. Yeah, see? They just threw it. the upper hand. And then Eivor catches it and throws it back. That's actually really cool. Can't wait to use something like that. Take the fight to your foes with a host of brutal new combat abilities. Oh. Snare them with a Viking harpoon. Pummel them with throwing axes. Incapacitate them with the new stun system to keep them at a distance. The stun attacks is probably the coolest. One of the coolest things, in my opinion. I really like how that feels. Okay, we need to talk about this. Um, I'm actually going to jump just so we're not watching the same 10 seconds again. <laughs> Here. Okay, so much debate has been had about one-handed swords. Um, it appears that they're not going to be in the game. Uh, that may be shocking to some of you guys, and I know there's some very vocal opponents of that, but yeah, I think it's it's daggers and short swords are relegated into one category called sea axes. And if you look up sea axe, S-E-A-X, uh, these were historically accurate, um, you know, tools and weapons that the Vikings used. Uh, that's not to say that they didn't use one-handed swords as well, but I think what you're seeing right here, guys, is a two-handed sword being held in one hand because we know we can do that um so yeah if you want one-handed swords you might be disappointed dual wield any two weapons you wish to unleash a deadly combination of attacks 
Yeah, 647 power. I don't know how we're actually gonna Customize get there. Customize your fighting style as you see fit and become a legendary. That axe warrior. move right there is ridiculous. Or I guess that was a hammer move. The flail is one of my favorite All weapons from the previous. Weapons are available to dual wield, including two shields. Oh, uh, two shields. I can't wait to try that. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, the two-handed sword. I got to use that in the second Not preview. All situations call for violence. Okay, this is the first time we got to see stealth. This was a big deal. In this new land, a Viking must find a way to adapt. As Eivor is not welcome in England, you may need to outsmart your enemies, avoiding unwanted attention in towns and bustling cities. Okay, still, that, that little scene of walking past guards while blending with other monks or cloaked figures is so classic Assassin's Creed, it's not even funny. And so I can't wait to do that. Um, I didn't actually get to walk through a gate in the second preview like this, but I did get to walk around with monks and yeah, it felt great. He's avoiding unwanted attention in towns and bustling cities. And the blending, the social Use blending. Use hood and cloak to blend with crowds and making bread. Eyes, an unseen hunter among the people. So cool. Still so awesome From to see that cities, social stealth villages, coming to back. The dense forests and rolling hills of England. Exploration is vital to keeping yourself sharp. You must feed off the land if you hope to endure. This game is so pretty. Hunt and forage to replenish your mythical beasts. Fortify your equipment. Search pagan temples and Roman ruins for new activities and challenges to strengthen yourself and your settlement. I still haven't done any of those. The more you explore, the more of England's secrets you will reveal. Oh. It's crazy how you go back and see this stuff and it gets you hyped again. But as you push it's easy to forget. England, the enemy will push back. In a series of climactic moments, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will feature massive assaults in which you will lead Eivor's army into battle against heavily guarded Saxon fortresses. Yeah, I remember the thinking of the time was like, oh, this is a lot like uh, Shadow of War. I think it was, yeah, Shadow of War. Middle Earth. Shadow of War was the game that had these fortress assaults, and it's like, oh, this is the Assassin's Creed version, which, after playing it, yeah, kind of feels that way. We will reclaim her. Today we but, you know, obviously, in its own way, in its own Assassin's Creed rebuild. way. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will transport you to wondrous and haunted lands, inspired by Norse myths <laughs> and England's pagan roots. It will challenge and surprise. Thank you, Pastor. With unforgettable. Oh, oh, we got to back up for this one. This is a big one. This is our first look at Bassam. At this time, we were like, who is this Levantine assassin just hanging in the background? Uh, I remember Darby hinting, like, there was some stuff shown off in the gameplay trailer that I'm not seeing enough people talk about. I'm sure a lot of people noticed this, but yeah, Bassam, man, look at him. Thank you, Pastor. With unforgettable characters. There's Alfred. Thrilling I think Alfred looks different than, and than the other guy. Bosses, giving you the chance to live your own Viking saga. Yes. I remember looking at this and we were all thinking like, is this actually in the game? And apparently it is. These x-ray assassinations. Assassin's Creed. You love to see it. Yeah, that was a really good trailer. Um, again, we had already played the game. That was the first preview, um, but it still showed off things that we hadn't experienced. But I think this was a really good trailer that gave people a, a good idea of what to expect um, from, from the full game. And uh, definitely the longest look that people had had up to that point from Ubisoft. Okay, it's time to move on to the Eivor's Fate character trailer, which I think this is the one that I'm least familiar with. Like, I watched it, but I think I only watched it a couple times. I can see your fate. Oh. It flows like a river, carved out before you. I can see your desires. Taking you far from your home 
to lands of power, of mystics, and legends. But you are hiding something. You walk with shadows. What is it you seek? I see conquest. I see your enemies. Okay, we're going to back up there. Um, love kind of the mythological side, or not the mythological, but the way that the Vikings believed. We knew early on that was going to play a huge role in how the game's presented and how Eivor acts, because Eivor is very much like a Norse, you know, uh, a, a representation of what a historical Norseman would be like. Um, but I want to pause here because this is the face that I think got people back and, and realizing like this game is going to improve, you know? Um, and we saw it in this trailer. That is a much better face than what we had in the last uh, trailer that showed the female Eivor. And also I've had this recurring idea that the, the face tattoo, the dark kind of tattoo around their eyes makes them look worse. Uh, and I still feel that way um, in the second preview when I actually got to customize this stuff. Okay, let's continue. There's Alfred again. Your struggles. Such a good look at Norway right there. Glory awaits you, Eivor. But it will cost you everything. Get a good look at more combat here. Yeah, the, br the brutal finishers, my god. See all of it. Oh, this is such a good trailer. Blood and flame. Loyalty and family. Betrayal. Hunger. There is a war within you. And glory will not be enough. Oh, man. That was a fire trailer. Seriously, that gave me goosebumps. I remember watching that trailer for the first time being like, oh, this is also, yeah, when, when the game was dated November 17th, but got pushed a week forward, which like, I feel like you almost never see these days. That was an exciting, you know, thing to, to have, but it was great to hear from Valka um, throughout that trailer. Again, kind of giving us a clearer picture into that Norse, belief system and how it's very different than at least in in the west how how we think um so yeah another great trailer let's move on to the story trailer which i'm, I'm gonna say the same thing about this one this was a fantastic trailer you intrigue me wolf kissed orphan and sibling yep i did a big breakdown of this one warrior and poet. <laughs> like who is that Not lady in one it seems hey boy see good Sigurd, this is where we learned a lot more about our brother. Your husband returns. And Ranvi. Bringing gifts. Oh yeah, we gotta we gotta back up here because this is like a bunch of speculation about the hidden ones, like Bassam right there, and then the guy on the left, which we now know as Hytham from the second preview, uh, and you know. And riches to share. And new friends. And we see how Eivor gets the hidden blade. There's some more hidden ones, we assassin. Stay in Norway. Yeah, Not there he is. Without fueling more war, so we push forward. A new kingdom awaits. This is where I was looking at the faces, and I was like, "Oh man, these look good. These look really, really good." From here to Valhalla. It's crazy looking at these faces side. and the evolution always. across these trailers. It's real. So Sigurd. pretty. I give you England. This land already has many rulers. Oh, hey, hold on. I'm seeing some familiar faces. This is the guy from the uh, from the second demo. Um, gosh, I can't remember his name. That's embarrassing. I'll put it on the screen. But he's the East Mercian uh, king. 
that we dethrone. It already has many. And then that, that's the guy, Chaowulf, who uh, we put on the throne in his place. From the There's Alfred again. Alfred of Wessex. I can't wait to meet him in that scene right there. That's going to be awesome. To the warmongering sons of... There's Ivar the Boneless. Uh, such a good character. And then there's uh, Uba, Uba and uh, Halfdan, which we haven't met yet. But yeah, uh, by process of elimination, we, we know that that is Halfdan and he will be in the game. And uh, we'll, we'll meet him in Northumbria. They have no wish to share the kingdoms. They have made their own. Oh. Such I good do not views. fear these men, nor any others who would harm us. These lands bring our people hope. I will do whatever it takes to make England our home. <laughs> The Saxons hunger for Norse blood. Let's give them a taste, brothers. Oh, that finisher. These conquests have given you a home, but there is more to this land, Avon. Oh, yeah. A darkness unseen, an unknowable threat. Okay, we got to back up here. This is huge. So much speculation about what's going on here. The cult of Mithras, that is a Mithraic statue there. And so much has been talked about since this trailer about their influence. And I even asked Darby about it. Um, and, and he had a lot of information to share. But yeah, you also see the Knowable threat. Templar medallions, which that's actually not a Templar medallion out of the look at. It's just a, it's a cross. But obviously the cross represents uh, the Templars. One bound to England's destiny and to yours. <laughs> Such a good trailer, man. This was another one that gave me goosebumps. Um, obviously, it's tough to watch this and not get feel like you're getting spoiled because it does kind of delve into details. But uh, man, I love watching these again. It is time to watch the deep dive trailers. This one's actually longer as well. So I'll try to uh, not talk and, and pause as much over the I'll probably talk over it but not pause as much this is a time of conquest so pretty the age of Vikings I think these longer trailers do a really good job of showing off the game he More than anything. Eivor, the fierce Viking war chief of the Raven Clan. There's Raven Clan. Eivor and their kin have forged into England to settle the new frontiers. But these are dangerous times, and each new landscape contains untold perils and mysteries to uncover. Your saga begins with a simple need for a home. Your Viking settlement is the beating heart of your adventure and is the intersecting point for many of Valhalla's interwoven storylines. Oh yeah, you know what? I am gonna pause here for a second because we actually had not seen footage of the settlement until this point, until here, and then until the, the previews, I believe, the, the second wave of previews where I actually got here, to walk around it. you'll get familiar with your clan yeah, and begin there's Volca, your journey through England. Gunner was before. At the Alliance map, you'll meet Randvi, the clan's key intel gatherer, and plan your first moves. Eivor, Sigurd, I give you England and its four kingdoms. Yeah, Mercia, it's so crazy East Anglia, Northumbria, that we didn't see it because it's so central to the game. By forging alliances really with is. different territories, the Raven Clan will expand their influence, allowing you to grow your settlement and open a wealth of new narrative arcs, missions, activities, and ways to experience the game world. Let's go. I still haven't visited Time one of those monoliths yet. Each of England's kingdoms have many stories to uncover, with their own unique plot lines, casts of characters, and challenges to overcome. Are you Sigurd's <laughs> Dranger, Eivor? If you keep that up, that's in Repton. <laughs> in Leta Chestershire, including Those assassinating such good targets, uh, characters, forging allies, and assaulting rivals in large-scale battles. 
That's uh, Bird Castle in East Anglia. Arcs explore the themes of honor, glory, leadership, and choice that are central to Eivor's journey. And your pivotal choices okay. will leave long... What is this? Yeah, it's like we're going to have to choose a, a a faction to lead a certain region and probably piss off the other ones. If that's three choices, choices like it looks like, it's going to be a tough choice to make. ...lasting impacts across the kingdoms. Three men, three possible futures. Yeah. Who will serve us best in a time of true need? That's going to be so tough. <laughs> Viking warfare is visceral and brutal, and there are many powerful rivals and enemy types that will stand in your way. Oh, thankfully, massive Eivor is flail. equipped with a diverse set of combat skills, including brute strength charging maneuvers. Yeah, the Rage of Helheim, that attack attacks, is insane. And explosive two-handed finishes, while range abilities like Man's Best Friend and oh, Poison yeah. Powder Trap allow you to flank and interrupt your foes from a distance. Man's best friend, that thing's insane. upgraded through a progression system, which allows you to unlock perks and abilities to suit your style of play. Yeah, so at this point, I had played the second preview and, and unlocked every single skill. So I, I saw every single one, which is still in my long extended preview, like 40 minute long video. Special abilities are found in books of knowledge hidden throughout the world and have their own upgrade tiers that improve their power and effectiveness. This is when we started seeing As you more. deeper on your journey, your explorations will reward you with exotic gear from the far corners of the oh, world. Oh, that stuff looks so Further cool. Further unlocking combat options and dual wield combinations, including the legendary Excalibur. Okay, what is up with this thing? We are going to have to hunt down Excalibur when this game comes out. I cannot wait for that. Sword of Eden, basically. Choice is central to Valhalla's player experience. And that begins with Eivor. At the start of your yeah. adventure, you'll have the opportunity to choose Eivor's gender. And you can seamlessly swap between male and female Eivor at any time during your story. And so I yeah, letting the animus choose, the at least according to Darby, is kind of the what they, of and what the writers sort of intended. But After a victory, that doesn't mean that choosing one or the other will make it a lesser experience. From your conquests using them to expand your settlement with structures and upgrades. There's a wide variety of structures to build, each with their own unique gameplay systems. Yeah, there's like over a perks. dozen buildings from what I could tell. The barracks allow you to elect a Jomsviking, which is a powerful Yom's Viking, Viking lieutenant. cannot and wait. And build a custom crew of raiders to ride with, which are shared with your friends online. Oh, by the way, guys, um, I am absolutely planning to have uh, like a rate Send me all of your Yams Vikings and I'll like rate them in a video. Um, it'll be kind of a goofy, silly video, but after launch, I want you guys to send me your Yams Vikings. Uh, I'll, I'll update you guys closer to when the game comes out, <laughs> but I think that'll be a really fun thing to kind of share Yams Vikings and even like have footage of me playing the game. And look, there's your Yams Viking in my game. I think that would be really cool. Gunnar the blacksmith enhances weapons and gear. And at the Tattooist, you'll customize Eivor's look. At the Shipyard, Gudrun and Goodmund will customize and improve your longship. And in the Hidden Ones Bureau, yeah. you will work from the shadows. There's Hytham. Embroiling yourself in a mysterious conflict with the Order of the Ancients. We have work to do, starting in the cities of England. Our task will not be an easy one. More social stealth. See, that's part of the game that I, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of old school purists wish that um, that part of the game was more forward leaning, that that was the focus more than Eivor being a Viking. Um, and I get that, especially if you you prefer the older games. Uh, but it's nice to know that there will be separate arcs. Like we learned from an interview, there's three arcs. There's Eivor's personal arc. There's the Raven Clan arc, and then there's the Order of the Ancients Hidden Ones arc. So be very interesting. These are just a few examples, and there's plenty more fun to be had around your settlement. Drink your weight in ale. <laughs> Play a game of Orlog. I can't wait to challenge Ron via a feast. drinking challenge. However, growth comes with its own set oh, of dangers, guy? and your settlement will become the target of new enemy factions. A septic rot has overtaken this shire. That's a big bamboozle. That's pretty sp spoilery, which I guess you get from watching trailers, right? Valhalla's world 
is built for a wandering spirit. You'll uncover deeper layers to Eivor's own story in a set of dramatic and intimate narrative through lines. I lost my parents when I was nine winters along. Without Sigurd, I would have. There is always one unbreakable bond. Yes. Player choice is woven through every Love you, facet of the game experience. And as you continue to explore, you'll We know Sigurd has a dark side, but man, I, I'm just going to be loyal to, to my brother. I just feel it. Cover new stories and epiphanies in the most unlikely places. Unless he's places. a Templar. Drink. If you seek true understanding. But this world is just the beginning. Balka, the clan seer, will unlock your senses. Oh, yeah. Allowing you to leap beyond. Holy to shit. Asgard, the legendary realm of Norse myth. From Norway to England. To, to America to Vinland. Assassin's Creed Valhalla allows you to experience your own elemental Viking saga. The thrill of discovery, the glory of victory, and the light of kinship. A journey beyond kingdoms and into the soul of a warrior. Gosh. Assassin's Creed. Just like the first extended trailer, this one is such a good representation, I feel like, from the 10 or so hours that I've played Valhalla. Uh, if you cross the previews yeah there's just it's such a massive game there's so much to do i feel like i'm going to be playing this thing for a while and uh, you know i know i've probably got some cyberpunk fans watching this too i'm really happy honestly um hate to say it but i'm happy that cyberpunk's gonna come out a little bit after i just want to spend as much time as i can on this game before i have my attention yanked away all right, we've got two more trailers, guys, and they're they're definitely short. Well, actually, they're not that short. We've got the post-launch trailer and the cinematic TV spot that actually just dropped like yesterday from the time I'm recording this. So let's watch the post-launch. Assassin's Creed Valhalla's ambitious post-launch plan features a season pass that includes two massive expansions and a bonus quest. Additionally, all Valhalla players will receive free seasonal content. This is a plan that has been simmering in the back of our heads for a long time. We want to help you further dive into the Viking fantasy. I know there's a lot of talk about why they would put this kind of trailer out. The first expansion, Raffle Before launch, will be coming out we'll talk early more spring about that. 2021, and it will take you on a journey to Ireland as you entangle and try to unravel mysteries of an ancient druid cult. This looks so cool. I can't wait to go to Within Ireland. Wrath of the Druids, you will get to fight the children of Dano cult who discover who their members are, hunt them down, and fight them. The children of what? Wrath of the Druids, you will get to fight the children of Dano cult who discover of Dano cult who dis to fight the children of Dano cult Dano that's what I'm who hearing members are hunt them down and fight them you will get to conquer ring forts Those and also so cool. influence the trading systems of Dublin which at the time was a bustling trading metropolis oh, it's gonna be so cool the majestic locations that the expansion will feature in Ireland the highlight here really is for the players that are more interested in the Celtic, the Druids, and those darker tones that really add that's to me. the mysterious feeling of the expansion. I love the, the darker tones. So that's spring. Up, early summer. Now this is summer. It's probably one of the most recognizable events in Viking history. This it's funny that he says that. Clearly, I have very little knowledge, at least before Valhalla, of Viking history. I had no idea that the Vikings raided Paris. This is going to be so cool. Siege of Paris will have you explore war torn Francia as you encounter historical figures. You will enjoy new replayable activities where you will battle and raid the elite units of Charles the Fat. Charles Within the, the Fat. Within the Siege of Paris, you will get to infiltrate, create alliances, and try to conquer Paris from within. It's going to be so cool. Both expansions will be included in the season pass. If you bought the gold edition, or the ultimate edition that will be included within it, as well as the bonus mission, The Legend of Bear Oh, Wolf. I'm very hyped to play this. Available at launch, that's right. Three times these attacks have happened. Bite marks, broken bones, and streaks of mold. This is not the work of a woodland preacher. No mortal hand could rend flesh in such a way. Surely you see that. I know this is an annoying comparison, but like hunting a monster, kind of following clues, this feels very 
uh, Witcher 3, like something Geralt would do. What sort of beast leaves a glistening mold of a freshly killed prey? Which I'm totally into. Free seasonal contents are free, accessible to all player content that we're going to deliver throughout the journey of AC Viola. Our first pre-seasonal content will be kicked off by the Yule Festival taking place in the settlement of Ivor. This event will be available to players late 2020. I'm I'm really excited for that too. Gonna definitely be returning to the game. Ambitious part of the if I'm not still playing it. Comes with the game modes. Which I plan Early to. in the past month, we'll release our first game mode, which is the River Raid. River Raid capitalizes on the core Wait, fantasy. What did he say? I was talking about. And I would say the most ambitious part of the seasonal content comes with the game modes. Early in the post launch, we'll release our first game mode, which is the River Raid. Early in the post launch, River Raid. River Raid capitalizes on the core fantasy of the raiding mechanic in the main game, it injects much more risk and reward within a different context. This sounds really cool. It also capitalizes a lot on a feature dear to us, which is the Jumps Viking. Player are able to actually hire Jumps Viking from their friends online and take on the entire crew. That's awesome. We plan to have four of those free seasonal content injected in the first year. I have not played an Assassin's Creed game. Um, like all year long or like come back to it multiple times like like Ubisoft kind of wants players to do or wanted them to do with Origins and Odyssey. I know a lot of you guys watching probably did. This will be my first time to kind of do that and like consistently play the game um, over the course of a year. And <laughs> this stuff makes me really hyped to do that. Expect all of them to contain new festivals within the settlement, events, new progression, skills, new gears, new adventures, and gameplay. New skills, new weapons, new progression. That is something that kind of was surprising to me. I don't know if we got that with post-launch with Origins and Odyssey. You guys can tell me. Last but not least, it is my pleasure to tell you guys that there will be a discovery tour for Assassin's Creed and Valhalla. That. We will reveal more details later, but I am excited to share that, yes, it is happening. We We're definitely going to do that, to experience too. How this content will evolve the experience and the memorable character of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We just really hope to entertain you as you write your own Viking saga. You know what honestly gets me so hyped, guys? Going to get wholesome for a second. The fact that I get to play this game and then share all of that stuff with you guys, that's that's what gets me so excited. Um, it's going to be a really fun year. Okay, final trailer is the cinematic TV spot, which is like a remix. I looked at a little bit of it. It's a remix of the first cinematic trailer. I thought it'd be a good way to kind of round out and cap off this video. When we were forsaken by starvation and death, the gods showed us a vision. Who is this narrating? Of a new life. It's it. They gave us the power. It's clearly a Dane. To claim it. Shield! It's also funny how there's no blood in this. Because it's a TV spot. <laughs> there's so much blood in the original one. Our gods watch as we show them victory. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, available November 10th. Hmm, man. Oh, man. Ah, I sufficiently hyped my mind out of my brain. It, that doesn't make sense. Um, I'm so hyped, guys. It. It was so cool to watch through all of these, and I hope you guys had the same reaction that I did. Um, and I hope you do the same thing on your own, because, yeah, there's just so much in these trailers. It's cool to kind of look back and see the journey that we've taken for the last uh, more than half a year, pushing one year. So, anyways, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. I, yeah, I wanted to make this because I made a, you guys saw the Q&A that I made last weekend, or the weekend before last, and... The reception on that was crazy amazing and I just wanted to share more of my face and kind of share these reactions with you guys because it, it seemed to get a lot of reception about that. A lot of really kind comments about like being positive about the game and kind of sharing wholesome vibes and energy which is totally the kind of creator that I want to be. So I'm glad that that came through. So guys, before we wrap up this video, I just want to tell you to stay tuned to the channel. Um, lots of content coming very soon, um, closer to launch with Valhalla, obviously, but 
lots of stuff coming to my channel for Valhalla, but also other games. Um, we've been covering almost exclusively Assassin's Creed, and it's just because been because of my personal hype and the reception that you guys have given me. But um, I just want to give you a heads up. There will be other games on this channel, and um, I will be sharing my experience with you guys. So much is coming out very soon. Um, so if you're not already, make sure you're subbed. Uh, stay tuned for that. I want to share, I think I've decided I want to share my genuine reactions of playing through the game with you guys. So it's going to be some long videos where I'm just playing and you're getting my reactions on screen, but also those opinion pieces and community focused things like, does this feel like an Assassin's Creed game? And what do I think after this many hours? These are kind of ideas that I have in my head that I'm planning. So make sure you're subbed. Stay tuned for all of that. And thank you guys so much for your support over the last year. Um, it's been truly incredible. Big thanks to my YouTube members, Grass, David, Kamal, Casey, Matthew, Spyro, JVO, John, Lil Man, Brock, Tia, Level 42, Ryan, and Nos for supporting the channel. If you wanna support me further, click the join button below this video. In exchange for your support, you'll unlock custom badges and emotes to use in chat. Check the link in the description for more information. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll talk to you next time. And when I talk to you next time, it will be t time to finally play Valhalla.